Hey everyone, it's Michael Dougal. I'm a residential real estate agent here in the greater Toronto area. We'll address the average price and take a look at some of the year over year changes when it comes to price and different style of homes in different areas in the GTA. We'll take a look at the general strength of the market. Is it a buyer's market? Is it a seller's market? We'll take a look at the average days on market. And for all of you buyers or investors out there, be sure to stay tuned to the end of the video where I'm going to share with you some good areas to buy in as far as buying under market value. And then conversely, I'll share with you which areas of the greater Toronto area are the hottest in terms of selling for the shortest amount of time and possibly even selling over your asking price. Take a look at the YouTube description where I actually have timestamps so you can refer to whatever portion of the video is pertinent to you. Let's get right into the video, but if you're considering buying or selling, then call me. Similarly, I'm looking for great agents. If you're an agent looking to collaborate and do more business, then as well, call me. My number is 416-671-5218, and let's get right into the video. So looking at this really neat chart here, which encompasses the number of sales as well as the average price and the change in the average price, I think the main headline, and you would probably agree, is that detached listings have sold for 31% more than what they were selling for 12 months ago. Although taking a look at condo apartments, they've actually decreased in value by 4.7%. Breaking it down further in terms of the style of property, we can see that the average detached listing sold for 1.359 million in January, 2021. The average semi-detached home sold for $996,000. The average townhouse sold for $803,000 and the average condo apartment sold for $600,000. And what you'll see in these figures is that the average price is higher in the 416. So in Toronto, generally that's south of steals. For detached listings in Toronto, for example, the average sale was one58 million. However, there was only 522 sales reported, 522 of a total 2,766. So a lot of these detached listings may be in luxury areas as well, therefore bringing our average price up. So taking a look at the year over year percent change, quite honestly, this isn't much of a difference than what we've been accustomed to over the past few months with freehold properties increasing in value and the condo market being somewhat oversupplied. Most condos are taking over a month to sell, especially in the 416, so Toronto. And there's a few reasons for this. One could be that a lot of buyers are not wanting an investment property right now, given that the situation with COVID is such that people generally don't want tenants. They don't want to have to go through applications and they're really just nervous with the fact that what if the landlord board is not receptive to them in the event that anything goes wrong with the tenant. So the condo market has suffered a little bit. Freehold properties, detached, semi-detached townhouses. The majority of them are actually selling over the asking price. If you see anything on the market longer than let's say two weeks, uh, very often it's a problem property in some sort of capacity. Taking a look at the detached listings, the year over year percent change is 31%. Although look at the spread, there was only a 16% increase in the 416, whereas there was a 36.6% increase in the 905. Semi-detached homes, they experienced an average price change year over year by 26.6%, of which that was 21.5% in the 416 and 25.4% in the 905. Townhouses, they increased increased by 15.9% year over year. Note that there was only a 4.1% increase in the 416 versus a 20% increase in the 905. So this could be due to the fact that a lot of buyers realize they don't need to be in Toronto. Therefore, there was increased demand, especially for smaller properties like townhouses in the 905. A lot of people that were prior working downtown are now working from home, realizing they don't need to necessarily be in downtown Toronto and they're purchasing in the 905 and I'm only expecting the prices to continue to increase. And then looking at condo apartments, they actually decreased in value year over year by 4.7%, being 8% of a decrease in the 416 and an increase by 4.8% in the 905. Although take a look at this, the actual volume of sales, there were 85% more sales during the month of January, 2021 versus January 2020. And that's really because now we have supply. Whereas last year, I remember buyers were really trying to find condos and there was basically nothing on the market. In some buildings, there were no condos up for sales or some buildings maybe just had one unit. Fortunately, now buyers actually have selection and they're able to first find a building which they like as far as its amenities and then they can take a look at that building 
maybe look at three or four units and decide which one best suits their preferences. And there's also such a large spread between the average price of a condo apartment versus a freehold property. Looking at it, the average condo is selling at 600,000, whereas a townhouse is selling at 803,000. So a lot of these buyers that were prior maybe considering getting a house, they've unfortunately surrendered to the idea that they have to buy a condo instead. There have been a lot of indications of it being a very strong start to 2021. As far as it being advantageous for not only sellers, but buyers as well, there were 52% more sales during January versus January last year. There was 20% new listings. There was a slight decrease in active listings by 4.8%. The average price, like I mentioned, is pretty much the highest it's ever been. It's at 967000 up by 15.5%. And the average days on market, which is how much time it takes a property to sell from the time it initially comes to the market, is now 33 days. Just four days less than what it was last year. Again, another indication that the market is better for sellers now than it was about a year ago. And then if you were to ask which areas of the GTA are the hottest, I like to take a look at this and analyze it based on two things. Number one, the average days on market. And secondly, how much above their asking price they're selling. Whereas some listings we're putting up for sale, they're selling in a few days and sometimes with 10, even 20 offers. The first would be pretty much all of Durham region because taking a look at it, the average days on market is 110% of its asking price. Oshawa specifically, the average home is selling in, on, in only 10 days, whereas in Ajax, the average home is selling in 11 days at 113% of their asking price. And then going to the West End, the hottest area seems to be Brampton with the average home selling in 12 days for only 105% of its asking price. This could be due to the fact that in Brampton, generally the prices are a little bit lower versus some other areas out West, like some areas of Mississauga, Caledon, Oakville and Milton. Brampton still fortunately is a place where you're looking at getting a nice house for about $800,000. And I've actually made a video on just that, this video here, which shows you properties you can afford for under $800,000 in the GTA. You may find that helpful as I got a lot of positive feedback after releasing that video. And then looking at the slower areas or areas where you can take advantage. First thing would be luxury homes, specifically in central Toronto. The days on market is relatively high. And then King City, uh, look at this. The average days on market is 81 days. Although the average price is relatively high at $2,067,000, its average days on market is 81 days, whereas in December, it was only 47 days on the market. It could perhaps be that land is less attractive right now, especially after COVID. Buyers are generally having a little bit of a more tougher time getting a mortgage specifically on rural property. And then another market to look into if you are considering buying where it's a little bit slower and you can take advantage is, like I mentioned, condos in Toronto. These are slow. They're taking an average of 35 days on the market to sell. And then the average price, not only did it decrease year over year, but even from December to January 2021, there was a one to 2% of a price decrease. And there's a lot of reasons for this. One is that it's simply oversupplied. There were about 1,700 active listings going into January. And then there were another 1,500 new condo listings which came on the market, yet we only had about 1,100 condo sales. So although freehold properties have increased in value, we've yet to see much of a difference with the average price of a Toronto condo. Quite honestly, is likely a result of condos being less appealing to investors. Investors were prior buying condos in Toronto and renting them out as they were close by to schools, close by to jobs, whereas now investors are less likely to buy condos, which is likely the reason why in the 905 condos have experienced a little bit of appreciation. Those are generally people looking to buy and move in, whereas Toronto condos, there's a good mix of people looking to buy and move in or buy as an investment. And given that the demand from investors has decreased, this could be a really good time to take advantage. Let's say if you have a bit of cash, you can purchase one of these condos, recognize the fact that it probably will not cash flow. It probably won't pay the mortgage, but likely long-term it's a good investment given that the rent is probably going to increase in value as well. Your condo is going to appreciate back in value. It's just that right now, of course, it may be a little bit tricky for you to get a solid tenant. And I really hope this information was helpful. If you are considering buying or selling, do contact me. And I'm always looking to collaborate with real estate agents. If you want to learn more about eXp Realty, where we have training, we have stock ownership, 
entrepreneurship and we have the ability to earn passive income, then call me, call me, call me. My number is 416-671-5218. And don't forget to click subscribe if you'd like to be informed when I make future videos. I'm typically posting at least a few times per month and I will look forward to seeing you all next time. Bye.